in minimax regret algorithm the name of the algorithm suggests that we do regret first but what that means is that uh, we do the regret table so let's write it down here so that we can compare right so we can say regret table we will construct the regret table first um, it is preferable to follow the same um, row and column label that is to say in this case we are presented with uh, state of nature in the columns decision alternatives as the rows so we'll try to follow okay so so that we are not confused by our own working now uh, in in the construction of regret table it is important again to know this particular prefix right just for the regret table huh? it will it, it becomes if s1 were to happen It is important to say this prefix uh, before you construct the regret table so that it will guide us into looking at uh, either the right column or the row. In this case, it's column for us. Uh, if S1 were to happen, that would mean that we look at only the column uh, 0 0.5, 1.0, 2.0. If S1 were to happen, right, we would have been so clever, so well informed in advance that we would have decided on d3 and if we had decided on d3 then basically what is our regret level our regret level is zero okay so first thing first is to say if s1 were to happen then we find the maximum amount that would give us zero regret we write that down first okay that's the important step can there be multiple decision alternatives that would lead to the same uh, zero regret outcome? Yes. Okay. Because if D2 were to be 2.0 million instead of 1.0 million, then we would get zero as well for the second row. But no, for if we had chosen D2 and S1 is known to happen, then we would say, oh gosh, right? The How loud our, oh my goodness is, is going to be measured by how much uh, less payoff because we already identified the maximum. How much lesser payoff will we have received if we have made more inferior decisions? So in this case, uh, it will be 1.0. Okay, and finally, if we had made a choice to select D1, our regret would have been 1.5 because it's 2.0 minus 0.5. Now, important thing to keep in mind, maximum payoff gives zero regret. All other regrets must be non-negative. Keep this in mind because if you ever write down a negative value for your regret, you will regret because it becomes, uh, it's going to definitely disorient the way you make your decision later based on the regret table, right? So just keep in mind, regret values are always non-negative because the maximum regret is always zero, all right? And any other decision will make you receive less payoff than the maximum uh, payoff, sorry. And therefore, will always give you more regret than if you had received the maximum payoff. Now, we are done with S1, we can move on to if S2 were to happen, then we would have zero regret if we have chosen, uh, what else that? D2. So let's write that down first. And then we can go through all other cells under S2, one by one, doesn't matter which order. Um, for D1, we'll receive 0 0.4 payoff, and our regret will therefore be 0 0.6 minus 0 0.4, 0 0.2. And for decision alternative D3, our regret will be 0 0.6 minus 0 0.5, 0 0.1. Okay. Finally, if S3 were to happen, then the decision alternative that gives us zero regret is D1, because that's the maximum payoff. And any other decisions that give us lesser than 0.3, because we chose the max, so every other decision must give us uh, lesser than 0.3 will give us positive pay, uh, regret. So in this case, we have 0.2 regret, 
and 0.3 minus 0.5 minus negative 0.5 we add them up we get 0.8 million as our regret so far so good okay so now that we have the regret table we can work out what is the best decision alternative and what should we do because the name is mini max regret now that we have regret we do the max well shall we do max on the payoff table or the regret table now if you do the mini max on the pay uh, payoff table then why do we need to construct the regret table right so it is also very clear cut what we need to do we should apply the mini max on the regret table so in this case uh, Whenever we apply mini max, maxi min, maxi max, we will fall back on the prefix if I were to choose. Yeah, okay, so now we apply that prefix to the regret table. If I were to choose D1, all right, mini max, so we need to choose the maximum. So the maximum regret that we, are, uh, we will see is 1.5. So let's record that. So the maximum regret that we will see is 1.5. Okay. If I were to choose D2, the maximum regret that I will see is 1. Right, that 1 comes from 1, 0, and 0 0.2. So maximum is 1. If I were to choose D3, the maximum regret I will see is 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.8. So we choose 0 0.8. So what do we do now? Mini max regret, right? So we have done the regret table. We select the maximum for each decision alternative. And now we take the minimum of the maximum regret, which is 0 0.8. Okay, the minimum of the maximum regret. So what this does is basically to minimize the worst outcome in that sense, right? So it's, it's being clever in, in that you are considering the worst case, but you are still trying to minimize all the uh, losses in some sense, uh, regrets, the, the, the shortcomings, right? Uh, for all the, amongst all the decision alternatives. So therefore, under mini max regret algorithm, our best decision alternative is going to be D3 as well, okay? So you see that um, there are two algorithms that selected D3 and one algorithm selected D1 and they don't necessarily have to concur with each other because we use them like we ask friends and consultants to help us right so and knowing very well that they might be very different opinion it is rare to find that all three algorithms agree on the same decision alternative just like you ask uh, three of your friends and all of all of them suggested the same uh, choice for you and if that is the case usually either it is easy to see because it's so polar polarly, uh, po uh, uh, polarized in the uh, decision of options that it is clear what is the best choice uh, or else uh, the payoffs basically says this is it is easy to determine and usually more often than not uh, we have to ask friends because it's complicated right and Therefore, it is not uncommon to see that your friends all have different opinions depending on whether they are optimistic, pessimistic, or they are trying to minimize the maximum regret, right? So, uh, and, and that's why we see that they have different outcomes. In practice, we actually run all of them and then uh, not necessarily by voting, see, you know, which, which uh, algorithms agree more on, but we at least have some more indications, some evaluated indications of what might be the best. For example, at least now we know that D2 doesn't seem to be a good choice, right? Uh, regardless of who we ask amongst the three algorithms. Yeah? So that's how we use decision-making uh, methods without knowledge of probabilities.